This is Mike, found with UI TV, and today we're gonna show you how to go from two windows to to this. All right, so we're replacing a window with a slider, okay? So first step here, obviously, is to remove the window. So we're going around, we roof some of the siding, um, and we're going around, we're finding all the nails in the flanges, and we're removing all the nails. We're pulling all the siding back, okay? And now we're gonna go inside, and we're gonna show you what we did in there. So now we moved inside. So last night what we did was we took all the drywall off, just to expose to know what we're working with, okay? There was an outlet that we had to move, so we moved that last night to get that out of the way. Um, and now we're just gonna work on uh, removing this window. So we're gonna get back outside and get whatever. where we're gonna remove the framing that's underneath the window, okay? So we're basically just gonna bash this all out, open this up. We're gonna leave this bottom sill uh, for now, this bottom plate, because we do have to make this opening a little bit smaller. So we're gonna pull this off, then reframe off of this up to there, and then we'll cut this flush, and you'll see that in the next step. Okay, so we got the window out, we got all the framing out. So now we got to prepare the opening. We have to prepare the rough opening uh, size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna worry about the width first. And what, the reason why we're gonna do that is because we have this bottom plate already here. So we're gonna build off of this. Mine has to be 72 and an eighth, okay? So we're gonna mark here and we're actually gonna build off of here first. Then we'll come back and we'll do the height, okay? So we got the, the framing in, we made our rough opening, our rough, our rough width, okay? So now what we're gonna do, the next step, is we're actually gonna cut this bottom plate out using a reciprocating saw. So we're gonna cut here, and here, and this is gonna come out. All right, so now that we got the width out of the way, we're now gonna move on to the height. So the rough opening height we need is 80 inches. So we're able to just, we're lucky here, we're able to just scab on a two by four and this gets us our perfect rough opening. So yours might be a little bit different. You might have to use plywood, you know, to bring it down as much as you need. But in this case, we're just adding a two by four to get our rough opening height. Top is finished. Now we're gonna move on to the bottom. So we need to pad this out. Um, this is gonna be a little difficult because this is kind of custom depending on how your house is built. But basically what we're looking at is the width of this door. We're looking at this face here. We wanna make sure that face lines up with this part of the siding. Because once we build all the siding, put all the corner bead on and all the all the siding, we want that to be flush, okay? So what we're doing right now is we're basically adding some padding. We're adding multiple layers of plywood. So we're adding two layers of plywood. That'll get us to basically flush with this. And then we're gonna use this like PVC trim to go down across the whole thing. And as you can see, that'll get us perfectly flush with where we wanna be. The door will then sit right on this edge here and then move in. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be good. So that's the next right, step. So the sill extensions that we put on here are complete. So now we have to prepare the sill for the door, okay? So we're gonna use some kind of um, flashing like this. We're gonna actually gonna run it down and around, okay? And we're gonna actually work in like a shingle pattern, okay? So we're gonna start from the bottom and then do that one first and then do the top so that if any water does get here, it kind of sheds down and goes, goes away. away from the house. Wrap everything up. We're gonna go six inches up. So I made some marks here. We could go all the way up. We might, but um, we're gonna get wrapping. Alright, so you want to 
gonna roll this stuff. I don't have a roller for this tape because I don't do this that often. So we're gonna use a rolling pin. This will get a lot of, a lot of people upset. All right, so now we're getting ready to install the door. Um, so we need to add some silicone um, to the flanges on the inside. So we're gonna add them in there. And then we also need to add a bunch of silicone on the sill before we add in. We actually wanna add a full tube of silicone, sealant, whatever you're using to the bottom, just to the sill. And then another tube probably all the way around the door. So we're gonna do that now. And then we're gonna lift this thing up and install it. Let's go. Two, three. Right, I'm good. Right. Filter. Up, down. Like so now the door is in its spot. Um, and now we're working on making it plumb and level and all that. So we knew our sill was perfectly level. So we want to always make sure this, the sill is level. Then what we did, our frame was a little wonky. So we had a little bit of a bulge out up here. And then we had another issue where this was really bent in, like literally like this, like it was pretty bad. You can even see it came apart a little bit up there. So what we did is we couldn't use the normal method of measuring the corners. What we did is we actually leveled this side first, okay? So we squared it, made sure it was square, like a squared angle down there and a squared angle down there. And now what we're doing is we're basically kind of manipulating this side to make sure that the reveal is the same all the way around. So we're actually using the door now and are working our way up the door and basically kind of manipulating this thing back into where it should be. The door is level. So that's why we're using, we leveled the door with the rollers. So now we're using the, the door to make sure that this, this piece is actually level as well. So it's a little different, but this is how we're doing it and uh, it should work. All right, so we're gonna get the shimming and screwing. All right, now we're using roofing nails and we're just gonna nail it in on all the flanges. All right, now that all the flanges are nailed, we're actually gonna use uh, some kind of tape. We're gonna use Protecto Wrap and this, this is what we've been using to tape the flange. So we're going to do the sides first and then we're going to do the header. Just like kind of you do shingles, right? Start your firm in the bottom, work your way up. Alright, so now next step, we're going to foam all the gap all the way around the door. And we're going to make sure we use window and door. We're not going to just use the red can. Uh, that'll expand and actually crush the uh, frame. So make sure you use window and door. We're close. All right, so the door is in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to finish up this video with just a few tips on how I finish the outside and how I finish the inside. It's pretty unique every situation or every house on how you're gonna finish this, but I'm gonna show you a few things that I think might help you or might help you in the future. Okay, so my situation here is I actually have aluminum siding. Um, so I'm not gonna put that back. Actually, I'm gonna rip this all down and I'm gonna convert, oh, I'm gonna convert to vinyl. You can actually connect vinyl siding to metal siding. And you can actually get it pretty close. If you look up here, actually, this is all vinyl and this is all metal. So this is all gonna be actually, I'm gonna take this all down and we're gonna do J channels around this whole thing and we're gonna install vinyl siding around this door. So when I'm taking this down, I wanna make sure I get back to this vinyl. So what I'm doing is I'm marking every few rows so that when I go to put this all back, I make sure I'm on the same level so that when I get up to here, I can clip into the vinyl. So this is gonna be really important down here and up here so that I match the uh, reveals everywhere. All right, so now we got all the siding off. So now we're actually starting to put stuff back together. So the first thing is the drip edge on the top. So basically you can see what I did here. We kind of cut it and wrapped it around it um, so that this sits up there. 
like that. So then we'll tack that with some um, roofing nails. And then we have to put our bottom piece on. And then we'll get to, uh, I don't know why I talk about the next steps, but we're gonna show them, right? Pack it in, and then we'll move on to the next step, of course, because we were gonna do that anyway. You know what I gotta remember? Speak in period, in sentences. In Speak as if you were gonna have a period at the end of the statement. Yes. Speak in statements. Speak in thoughts. Thoughts, complete thoughts. Yes. So we got the sides on. Uh, now we're gonna add the bottom and the top. So this is just a little detail that you, you wanna do. You wanna notch that. What that does, if any water gets in there, it'll allow it to travel down and inside. And I'll kind of show you how this, you know, that flicks in there. And that's a finished look. All right, so the outside is done. So now we're gonna move on the inside. But before I get to the drywall and how to finish it, if you saw those steps out there and you like those steps and you wanna know how to build those steps, I am making a video and I will be sharing that. So please hit that subscription button so you don't miss it. All right, so the inside of my house, half inch drywall, pretty standard. Most houses have half inch drywall. Now, the unique thing about mine is the way that my door laid out I needed to put the drywall over the door, okay? So what that leaves me with is a half inch of drywall that we don't wanna see. And basically what I need to do is create a jam extension. All it is, is it's, it's an extension of the jam. So this is the jam and we're gonna extend it by a half inch, which is the amount of the drywall. Now, they make this really nice trim piece. If you look at that, it slips over the drywall. They make them, I believe they come in 10 foot lengths. I just cut one down short just to show you for the video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna slide it over this. I will cut this drywall back about a half inch. You can see actually the line that I have set up. So this will be inset and then my casing will go right over top of it. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna finish my drywall. This may or may not pertain to you, but you can use something like this. Okay, another thing for drywalling around a door. So you want to actually add a full piece. You don't want to have a seam here or a seam here. This is actually, this is a pen, this is not a seam. And the reason why you don't want to do that is because this is prone to cracking. So you actually want to run one full piece, the whole entire length, and then attach it somewhere down here, okay? You don't want to have any seams up here it will settle, it will crack, most likely, okay? So this is just another FYI. I don't like that this is the way that this is matching up, but it kind of is what it is because it's right near the lock, but no big deal. So like I said, we're not gonna get into finishing drywall. I actually have a lot of finishing to do inside this. I'm putting the same door in over there, so I'm destroying the wall over there, and then we're ripping this kitchen completely out. So I will finish this all at the same time when I'm doing the kitchen. And if you're interested in doing kitchens, please also hit that subscription button because I will be sharing all of that on this channel as well. But with that, I am Mike from Family DIY TV. I wanna thank you for your time watching the video. Um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Any critiques, any comments, any praises, please let me know down in the comments below. I really appreciate that. It also helps the channel, it helps me. Uh, please hit that like button as well. Uh, if I didn't say it, hit the subscription button. But I'm Mike from Family DIY TV and I'm out.